Needs more sugar. How you doing? Top Cloud here. As you can see, it it says it on my wall. So Terraria, great game, amazing game even. Now one thing about Terraria that usually catches one's interest is its fair share of challenge and variety. Whether it be simply completing the game, collecting the wide assortment of bizarre achievements it has to offer, or just challenging yourself to stick to a self-asserted role. Kind of like I had done by finishing the game with no armor. But what if I wanted more? What if I wanted my steel gamer testicles to really just clash with these fictional monstrosities causing me to regurgitate profusely each time I tussled with them? Well, I have just the thing. Masochist mode. What the f- Adding hundreds of new items, including post Moonlord content, introducing new bosses and NPCs, and even revamping every single vanilla boss, giving them new attacks, new AI, and even new textures. It even buffs the regular enemies too. Hope it's becoming a little bit more clear now. Regular Terraria? Terraria with mod. <laughs> also, this is gonna be a three-part series because I'll be dividing it based on the progression of the game. You're currently watching the pre-hard mode segment and I'll have the hard mode segment out soon. It just it just takes a while. Also, I have played and beaten this mod before on another difficulty it adds called Eternity, but I just, I just never uploaded it. <laughs> but with that being said, let's begin the Rampage. So spawning into my lovely future hell, I immediately grabbed the mutant skiff to enable maskist mode, which also gave me an NPC from this guy that handed me a bunch of starter equipment with it. How kind of the game to make my life a tiny bit easier after I just sold my soul to whatever god was behind all this nonsense. So I set up the storage system it gave me, then down two of the insta houses because I didn't really want to carry them. And then we started our journey, digging deep within Terraria's crust, because we were going to need to gear up to the teeth and gear up fast. Whoa! Are you serious? No, there's a little house just tucked away over here with no chest in it. And sure, I might have found some great, or, you know, maybe even some extravagant self-care items, but the cost of this was four deaths. Hmm, I thought it'd be a lot more than that, actually. Oh, and I also forgot I was going to be spinning a wheel to choose what class I'll be using for the entire game. So I did that, and I was blessed. Oh my god, I am so- Yeah, melee. My fingertips and nuts were undergoing cardiac arrest from all the relief and excitement. It's not every day you get to spend hundreds of hours going through the deep end of purgatory with your favorite class after all. Oh my god, we got melee. My favorite class. We got melee. <gasps> Oh my god, we got melee! And luckily for me, I found a tribe not too far it. away, which was Loot a very pleasing starter weapon. Loot. I mean, sure, it did jack shit most of the time, but I was happy. And after some more mining, I made a little cozy workspace with some more housing. Then, I went back into the mines, because I wasn't joking about gearing up quickly, so I was aiming for platinum to make the full set, as well as grabbing some more yummy life crystals. And I ended up finding a lot of cool stuff, including death. And I run into a fucking spider biome. Amazing. And honestly, the platinum was taking forever to find, so instead, I decided to settle cactus armor until I could actually find enough. I also started doing a little research on how to make a few enchantments since they looked really cool. And to top it all off, I set up some more houses in the desert because I was going to need the painter to move in. Why was I going to need the painter? Well, I'll explain it when it's time because I want to move on. And we're going to be moving on into the desert, which was a waste of time. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Oh my god, you gave me the worst thing. There's another chest. Please give me a chisel or something. Are you fing joking? So I willingly went home to upgrade my mace and to finish making my cacti set. Man, honestly, I just went mining some more since I didn't really know where to go from here. And you already know the mine is your best friend when you are sure as shit clueless. So a few life crystals and boring chests later, I could finally afford a platinum set, but I also found some gravitation potions, which means sky loot was now at my disposal. Now, thankfully, most of the stuff I found was somewhat useful, like this brand new star fury, which actually carried me through two of the bosses. But never mind that. The demolitionist is here, and you know what that means? Insta Ballista Elevator, baby. I then remembered about the tungsten enchantment, which yanks and cranks your melee weapon stats by a pretty favorable amount, which made me have a lot of interest in it. But the only problem was, was its harsh crafting recipe, which blew me away. Grabbing a katana and a ruler were gonna be such a pain to get, cause not only was I gonna have to beat a goblin invasion to get the goblin tinker, but I also needed a traveling merchant. Now thankfully, Fargo's just allows you to catch NPCs so you could compress a merchant into a katana, but still, I'm lazy. So I just slid it aside for now and started focusing on preparations for my first boss. I figured a simple arena with a mouthful of chemicals should do the trick. Well, not for this guy. He just folded me like I was some kind of complex origami project. But the Trojan Squirrel, on the other hand, well, that's something I could work with. Not easily, but just barely. And of course, the literal star of the show happens to be the star projectile from my sword. Not my radical and precise maneuver tactics that definitely carry this whole thing, definitely. But after the first attempt, it became way more clear that his attacks were just time oh jumps in a marathon gosh. of running, which allowed me to watch him combust. The only thing I ended up keeping from his remains was a lot of herbs, which will assist me later on in making a lot of mysterious liquids. And after that, I started making 
finding an artificial desert fishing spot so I could finish the cactus enchantment recipe. I made it look just a little nice because of some minor OCD problems, but then I caught myself a flounder. Then I ran over to the painter to sell things because I was poor as hell, so I could afford a painting he sold because it was included in the enchantments recipe for some odd reason. And then I finally made it. I wouldn't really rely on it to save my poor good for nothing soul, but you know, it is what it is. I then went on a little tungsten mining trip to secure the armor and the blade for when I was ready to make the enchantment. I also ran into Tim, and he kicked my ass so hard that I flew back up to the surface. No way, I actually died and just respawned. Never mind. I then tried to fight the Trojan squirrel again for money, but it didn't really work out. Something I also started to realize was that without Pharaoh Claws, the constant clicking to attack things was actually starting to give me a faint but agonizing feeling of carpal tunnel after a few swings. But before attempting to walk in the jungle to acquire a pair, I went to the edge of my world to place some houses and got everything I needed to make the Boral Wood enchantment. But before I could craft it, the Eye of Cthulhu did not like the way I looked at him, so he brutally molested me. I just want to ignore the fact that sometime in the future, I was going to have to poke at this geeked out Pez dispenser, which was probably going to feel like attacking a boa with an 8-inch skewer. But putting aside the shish kebabing, I fin it. I finish making the enchantment, then find myself going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the slime rain. But I chose to ignore it to the best of my ability and try fighting the king slime because I acquired its summon, which went terrible. Even with my arena doubling in size, I was still getting absolutely cooked by this thing. So after burning through a few lifetimes to even make a Genshin player jealous, I started searching for those feral claws I've been talking about. And I did it by using thousands of boom shurikens to buy my way through almost the entire jungle. No, like, they took an embarrassingly long time to find. And in the middle of it, I was actually able to kidnap a traveling merchant for the katana I was gonna need. But now's not the time to compress human organs into stainless steel, it was time to put an end to the king's slime. But not before he put an end to me, quite a few times. You know, this fight was kinda like my real awakening for what was to come later in the game. Just a whole bunch of smack dab bullshit. I ended up getting the king slasher, which was a really helpful melee weapon that sprayed like these 3-5 to five gel projectiles projectiles which actually kicked ass, I'm not gonna lie. I also equipped the slimy shield before testing out my new thingies on the eye, which actually went a whole lot better than I thought it would go. Well, for my taste at least. Then I spent a while smacking trees because I was gonna need a peach for the lead enchantment, and I wanted to get it since it had this poison attack which would build up over time and it seemed pretty helpful, so I got that. Also, here's where I let one of my subscribers join because we were on a Discord call, which you should definitely join by the way. Don't worry, he didn't do any progressing with me, he just wanted to build things. Or well, that's at least what he said he wanted to do. I mean, for all I know, that flimsy bastard could have been staring at the nursery majority of the time. Honestly, who knows? But anyway, while he was adding some spice to my world, I summoned in the goblin army since I was in desperate need of the tinkerer. So it's, you know, accessory shenanigans. And after the invasion, I found the greasy goblin, moved him in, and stripped my pal here from all the accessories I gave him for my own benefit. I also made that katana I was talking about earlier. Then I stole another traveling merchant since maybe, you know, I can use him for parts in the future. I also finally crafted that tungsten enchantment, which let me say now was glued to my body like an iPad to a modern day seven-year-old. Literally turned my flaccid melee weapons into hyper colossal boss spanking menaces. It was a great, marvelous even, investment. Oh, and by the way, I found this enchant sword shrine back when I made the tungsten enchantment, so now I had an enchant sword. Then I slayed the funny squirrel again and again for money because I was very, very poor, <laughs> and it pretty much stayed that way throughout the entirety of pre-hard mode. I was literally wearing rags. And here's where the time finally came to put an end to the new improved like Eye of Cthulhu. And the raw chaos that unfolded for me fighting this thing while on call with four other people was somewhat of a negligence to most morals that any one of us had. It was around three hours of constant trial and error. Actually, let me rephrase that. It was just constant error among my part. <laughs> you might think I'm lying, but it really happened. Here, take a look. What is going on? I am so close. <laughs> Nurse is gone. He had 93 health, dude! <laughs> dude, it actually sounds like you're, like, traveling to a different realm. <laughs> you're not gonna make it to tomorrow if you keep doing that. What the fuck? I'm gonna wake up everybody in my house. You're gonna wake up everyone in the video. Oh sh! Okay. Oh, he's after you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I pulled up. He wanted a bite of the now. apple. Take a bite out of yeah. the apple. His name is probably Eve. 
It was so agonizing having my eardrums tantalized at 2am and repeatedly going through attempts with the eye and squirrel that even I started to go bananas. I tried to think of so many solutions to compete with this thing that eventually I just accepted that it was a major skill issue on my behalf. I expanded my platforms multiple times and even fished for endurance potions but still, I was absolutely cheeks at this fight. But finally, I got the try that ended this all. Not easily, but you know, I still managed. Yes! Yes! Oh my gosh! All I have to say is I'm very happy with my sweet dear shield of Cthulhu. You have no idea. And since there was still half a cup of nighttime left, I summoned in a blood moon to get myself the shark tooth necklace, but not to equip it, to hoard. Also, I got reminded that I sadly didn't receive the leash Cthulhu from the eye. Which if you don't know what it is, it's a very crisp melee weapon that summons homing eyes whenever it makes contact with something, which was super broken in my opinion. But I'm no way in hell fighting that thing again, so we're throwing that out the window for now. But anyway, I lay down some more grade A housing for my desert NPCs, then admire the pyramid that was built by my lovely and cherishable companion. I then asked my attorney advisor for help, because I swear, I really needed help, in-game and mentally, after that catastrophic event with the eye. And it suggested that before I fight the Eater of Worlds, I make something called a jungle enchantment. Another day, another jam-packed session of farming things for another enchantment. And ironically, farming is this whole mod's gimmick, besides the exciting revamped bosses. Anyway, the jungle enchantment is basically a less powerful dash, but with a triple jump, which sounded pretty convenient it for the upcoming boss. But before going ham and starting another French revolution in the jungle, I stopped in my tracks when I saw the alchemist move in. Now I thought the alchemist was the NPC that sold potions, like the useful ones, but I was wrong. So with my frostbite and cryptid blue balls, I started walking back to the jungle, but then the actual brewer moved in. And this was amazing. Well, not for my piggy bank, but for my health and sanity. Cause in this mod, if you have over 30 of a potion or a meal in your inventory, then you keep those effects permanently. Now again, I was broke as hell, but that didn't stop me from spending all my life savings on a permanent endurance buff. Also, I just realized I had more than enough material to make 30 iron skin regen since I've literally been farming the Trojan Squirrel to the point of extinction. Anyway, back to that jungle enchantment thingy, which took a while since apparently, man-eaters one-tap you in maskus mode. What? And the cherry to top it all off, the last thing I needed was a jungle rose, and I could not find one for the absolute life of me. And to craft one, I needed a living loom, which caused me to leave the comfort of my humble settlement gamer dome and venture out into the unknown. Such a tragedy, I know. Uncurable diseases and world hunger don't even break close to being an arm's length from this uncanny obstacle. But you know what? I found one anyway. And just like that, we had ourselves an equipable green apple warhead. Also, while I was at the corruption, I blew up the rest of the orbs I needed to spawn in the worm so I could acquire it in summon. Obviously, I fled the scene because I didn't want to get folded like a forgotten receipt, but I did spawn him in when I got home. And listen up. This was an abysmal idea. Why you may be asking? Well, because this fucker corrupts almost anything he touches. The fight itself wasn't really that bad. It was mostly just a bullet hell, nothing new. But I really didn't appreciate this circumcised cucumber pulling a Midas on me. Except there was no gold, only mold that birthed the abominations that I would have to deal with until the area was fully purified, which can be properly done after grabbing the contaminator. Anyway, I managed to kill the eater on the next try, and comparing it to the eye made it seem like it was a puny Pikmin running at me with a crude knife. Not gonna lie. So with the easiest boss so far down, I make myself a shiny set of shadow scale armor with, of course, a pick, and also equipped a new accessory the worm dropped called the Dark Heart. Now what this did was increase my movement speed and turnaround traction by 10%, and made my weapon spit out many eaters from time to time that latch onto enemies causing the cursed inferno debuff. So with the crumbs of coin I had left, I reforged it to something decent then went mining for gems to upgrade my storage. Also these houses right here were completely useless now thanks to the evil spreading. So yeah, if the feeling of a corkscrew slowly digging into my testicles wasn't noticeable enough a few minutes ago, well, now it is. But after face palming for the fifth time in the span of three minutes, I finished my demonite storage upgrades, then popped some obsidian skin potions to gather hellstone. And thanks to Ore Excavator being so majestically satisfying, I grabbed well over a lifetime, then got its obsidian pair to make a ton of upgraded armor and tools. And since I still had plenty of leftovers, I steal some topaz from one of my companion's builds to make even more storage upgrades. And at this point, I decided to relocate my builds and set up a few pylons so the NPCs can actually have a somewhat safe life and started making preparations for the next boss, which was none other than the bee outside my window. And basically, I just spent around 40 minutes profiting from the Eater Summons the Mutant Soul to be able to afford more tasty multi-flavored slurp juices, specifically Rage and Wrath. I also tried out this hellish version of the brain since I could buy its summon, and all I have to say is I'm glad I chose corruption. But after I had successfully thrown the worm around like it was a baby duck stuck in a cement mixer, I had crafted a city buster and accidentally woke up the queen bee. So with no arena nor a clear vision of what was in front of me, I violently start swinging like my life depended on it. Well, cause it kinda did, but never mind that, I managed to make it a little past the 
halfway mark before meeting my doom. But hey, it's cool. Now I can set up my little arena. And again, we love Ore Excavator. I actually found another gold slime as well as obtaining myself a Bezor. And this was going to be a pretty vital accessory for the bee, because if you didn't already know, you could just leave it in a social slot, and whenever you get poisoned, you could just switch a root with another accessory for a second to fully cure yourself. Then, one campfire later, and the fight was in full course. I wouldn't say this fight was, you know, eating away at my brain like almost every other fight so far, but it was still, nonetheless, a hard, throbbing bullet hell. It especially gets gay when she sends her servants after me, then ensues a bee kamikaze on top of it. Another thing I did start to notice was how low my damage was in this fight. I mean, sure, my main weapon was a pre i sword, but hey, I thought it was balling. Ballin in the ashes of the underworld. I tried giving her one more try before taking another look at some other weapons and it was going pretty well. I managed to mostly dodge her Kamehameha but then she brought out three more of her loyal simps. At that point I was like there's no way this was possible. I was getting torn to shreds, molecule by molecule, atom by atom. So as I already said before, I did beat attorney mode a while ago but just never posted it. But I did remember finding this weapon called the lightning rod and this staticky stick was duct taped to my hotbar for pretty much the entirety of pre-hard mode. Kind of like the tungsten enchantment was. So I reforged it to Ruthless for that sweet 19% damage increase, then tested it out on the B. And wow, comparing the current damage to the King Slasher was above and beyond my expectations. I was slapping around the B like it was nothing. Not even her minions were a problem anymore. One by one, they were literally dropping like flies, not bees. There were some occasions where I got frighteningly low, but hey, just somehow my inner pro gaming instincts came out and completely powered through all these bullshit attacks. And just like that, we killed the B on our first attempt with this oh new cataclysmic God, weapon. And Honestly, the hardest part of this fight was me Jesus. struggling to equip the Bezor while avoiding everything. Yeah, suck my dick, Queen BLT. <laughs> the fuck does what but anyway with her drops having none of my interest i check out which boss was next up and it was our good friend skelly boy and my thingy says i needed all this stuff for it the only thing i agreed with was the bundle of blooms the other stuff was about as accurate for my setup as someone with two lazy eyes playing darts also this lightning rod was a godsend for dealing with eaters like look at this shit and i also found out that an npc sold some very appealing accessories so we were going to keep a close eye on it for later you know when i could actually afford more than one and a half twix bars so before we butted heads with skeletron i wanted to do a bit of accessory progression. And by accessory progression, I mean getting myself everything for the tear spark boots and killing the brain to get the gutted heart. Tell you what, I was not at all going to be underestimating this based arthritis Looney Tune character, and it was for a very good reason too, which I'll get into later. Also while farming for the obsidian rose, I found a mimic, and just somehow it drops a titan glove and a philosopher's stone. Now the thing I was most excited about was the fact that I got a damn titan glove, cause I can make the power glove in pre hard mode. And this might just be me, but that was absolutely delicious. Anyway, now talking about the steps of progression towards the boots, well, everything was pretty easy to obtain. Except this thing. I literally had to scour a world's length of my depths to find one lava charm. But after no blood, nor sweat, just straight tears, I now held my custom sewed lime tins. And I was very thankful that it came with a warding modifier so I didn't have to dig myself in a deeper debt trying to reforge them into something decent. Now, with that being one and done, I buy a bunch of brain summons from our combusted special friend that looks like he got dropped into a blender at a young age and started racking up temps with this nightmare. It took me seven tries to be able to clap this boss with pre-skeletron equipment. Like why was this thing so unbelievably difficult? The first phase was the easiest thing ever. Then it transformed into a fucking mutated science experiment that went so wrong it transmitted a dose of leukemia to the entire population. In short terms this fight was literal cancer. But now that it has been banished to the deepest pits of hell I finally got my hands on the gutted heart. What does the gutted heart cast upon me you might ask? Well it increases my max health by 10% and summons creepers every 10 to 15 seconds that will home around me and act sorta as a damage repellent. But when they die, it gives the attacker an Icor debuff. So basically, I have a very aggressive black recluse circling around me almost at all times. So now, I just needed one more thing before throwing hands with Skeletron, and that thing was the bundle of balloons. I could pretty much buy everything I needed for the recipe from the Tinker, except one thing, and that thing was a sandstorm in a bottle. Of course, out of anything, it just had to be the accessory that gave the same amount of aggravation getting as waxing your eyebrows with military graded duct tape. But luckily, in this mod, you can easily craft a sandstorm in a bottle in various ways, and one of those ways includes to you having three oasis crates. And you should know damn well by now I wasn't going to be casting my rod anywhere near any type of water. But not to fear, there was a simple solution with a simple fix to solve this simple problem. And that was by just farming sand elementals. Cause not only do they spawn in pre-hard mode, but they also have oasis crates in their drop pool. Now how was I going to kill a hard mode mini boss with pre-hard mode gear and one of Terraria's hardest mods? Well, I had no idea. But regardless, we were still going to give it a shot. So I bought a cool trinket that summoned a sandstorm and started patiently waiting. But something you should know about 
about me is my patience tolerance is about as sustainable as the average human being listening to any Tyler Swift song, meaning I wanted to move on very quickly. But eventually, I did stumble across an elemental, which was fairly easy to deal with, and got myself one third of the recipe's components. I also got the Sands of Time, which not only gave me the ability to teleport to my last death point, but also speeds up my respawn timer so I didn't have to sit in self-sorrow for a whole 15 seconds, contemplating on why I just got molested for the 46th time by a giant brain. It also gave me immunity to getting pricked by cactuses, but who the fuck cares about that? But after depleting that sand elemental from the surface of this world, I went a good 30 minutes without another one even glancing in my direction. So I was temporarily just gonna have to fight the boss without the bundle of balloons, cause honestly, I didn't want to stand around in the dudes for another second. So I let myself in the dungeon to sacrifice the old man to spawn Skeletron and then immediately recalled home since I didn't want to get clapped for the millionth time. So I pretty much just bought him to go. And now in the comfort of my luxurious arena, we can now properly attempt this guy. And so far, everything seemed to be pretty normal. Simple attacks, simple projectile functions, you know, just your average Terraria boss. Until you get him down to half health. He regrows an extra pair of limbs, then learns this fidget spinner attack, which did nothing less of violate me over and over again. I was having so much trouble figuring out what exactly needed to be done at this certain attack, which was the main reason this fight took me over two hours after all. The trick was I would have to make out just the right distance between his hands and his skull so I could properly avoid all the projectiles that were being tossed at me, all the while still maintaining the distance between his main segments. Because if I was too far away, then I would just end up getting smacked by either his hands or just getting pushed into his head. I kind of imagined it as the circle from Spongebob, so you had to like stay in it to be protected. You worthless bitch ass nigga. This was a fight about precision and dashing, really. It was just tight spaces whenever he got down to 6500 HP. I even replaced the gutted heart with the darkened heart so I could squeeze out just a bit more momentum traction. But finally, after a little luck and a lot of brain power and elbow grease, I got this attempt. Okay. Bro, he's like so fast at the end. I have to figure out a way out. I have to figure out a way to get away from him. I was so focused on dodging the attacks that I didn't even see he was about to transition into his dungeon guardian form. Yes, he has one of those. And that's how I absolutely threw not only the dub but another fucking hour of my life getting rambunctiously boned by the same damn attacks. Bro, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I'm throwing. I'm folding so hard. What the fuck? Why is it coming from the sky? What is this? What? Is, what? Bro, how are you not like raging after that? What the? It's okay. I know he can't handle me. I know he ain't built for this. I'm built for this. He ain't got shit on me. I'm the one. I'm the one who makes him th stay awake at night. I'm the one that's always on his mind. He ain't got shit on me. I'm the one that makes him hard. Work hard. <laughs> no, nobody work makes him work harder than I do because I'm always on his mind. I'm always occupying his presence. Nothing. Board. You got him on board. Shut your <laughs> bitch ass up. This is, this is what I was meant to do. I was meant to whoop this bony bitch right in the hell. And he ain't coming back out because he's going to be drowning in that lava when I keep his head under it. But let me go ahead and just speed you up to the part where I ended this nuisance while having a normal conversation at the same time. <laughs> Bro, pumpkin seeds are great. Yeah, they kind of... Yeah, they kind of rule. Especially with, like, salt. They're actually really good. W yeah! W yeah! And you beat it. Yeah. So definitely didn't almost piss myself. Wait, maybe I did. You know, I think this fight made me just a tad bit claustrophobic. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, future Top Cloud here. I'm actually on one of the upcoming bosses right now, and I just wanted to say Skeletron was a treat. An absolute breeze compared to the horrors that awaited me after Deer Clops. I'm not kidding. I'm two days in on this boss in real time, and I think I've lost all compassion, sanity, and just straight will to proceed with this any further. But anyway, I just wanted to get that out. I won't keep you any longer. Hey, pass me. You can have him back. I appreciate that. Hey, good luck with your shenanigans, though. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you. Anyway, disregarding my future self statement about my mind slowly deteriorating, I equipped the necromantic brew that Skeletron kindly dropped for me, which really assisted my dashing feature and also gave me an extra pair of hands, you know, to help me smack things. And after that, I went ahead and removed all the gravestones I've been piling up thanks to these drugged up bosses and killed the worm a bunch of times for even more reforges. And as I was doing my routinely check on my NPCs, I spotted the clothier, and he was selling a gosh darn pharaoh set. I started selling my belongings at supersonic speed so I could afford it because this raggedy two-piece cloth set would allow me to make this sandstorm in a model. So finally, after all this time, we had ourselves the voluptuous triple balloon succotash gawk gawk. 
<laughs> okay, where the fuck is this going? We had an airborne mobility scooter in short terms. So now that we had only a mere 33% of the way left till hard mode, in boss terms, I wanted to try and finish them as soon as possible. So now, with the dungeon granting me access to explore its remains, I quickly hop inside to locate three things in three things only. A cobalt shield, a shadow key, and most important of all, a Muramasa. I start off this catacomb raid with my first chest not only giving me the dazzling shield, but as well as the shadow key. This seemed way easier than I thought it'd be. I briefly thought to myself without any doubts of anything going away. Mimics, chest after chest, lockbox after lockbox, the game was refusing to give me the sword that held my indefinite future salvation. And what for? I will get, I will make you a full course meal of shrimp. That is cap. Holy shit. I can't believe you just told the biggest lie ever to my face. But after losing my mind like I was stuck in an eternal loop of nothingness and void for about half an hour, I got my hands on the precious blade and forged it into the sweet, sweet knight's edge. Now this tonsil tickling elemental piece of metal was going to stay very, very close to my side for the rest of this video. Because surprise, surprise, melee actually wasn't that great towards the end of pre-hard mode. I mean, sure, the damage was alright, but the range just made it completely fall apart when it went up against the remainder of the bosses. I'll show you what I mean when the time comes, though, but for now, it was time to earn money to reforge this Thingy. In the end of it all, I was able to slap a solid godly on it after half an hour. So with that, I traveled down to hell to open some shadow chests to acquire the Dark Lance. Then I buy a bunch of battle and calming potions from the brewer to make the battle cry, which I should have made way sooner. But dementia has taken a greater toll on me than anticipated, but you know, what can you do? Anyway, thinking deer clops was going to be a pretty short walk in the park, I farmed for enough snowflakes fur to craft the deer thing, then tested them out at home. And what did we learn from this? Well, we learned that this was no ordinary walk in the park, as my shoes were made out of fucking hot coals. So since you couldn't use platforms in this fight, I moved to a part of the world that was relatively flat so I didn't have to spend a millennia terraforming the lands and gave it another go. And honestly, it went pretty well this time. It was just the same patterns over and over again until he got to a second phase. He pretty much kept that pattern going but with more speed and width and starts introducing some more fun fun, quote unquote, fun attacks, including a heavenly gift of snow boulders and this speedy ass laser which can literally cut through time itself if it really had the intentions to. Then I switched to the Dark Lance after a few tries since I noticed it stacks a bit more damage than the Knight's Edge usually does. Cause yeah, damage is love, damage is life. I wouldn't say this boss was terribly difficult, I mean it was mostly just a test of reaction timing and how well you could button mash and resist the urge to wax your pubes off. But honestly, not a bad boss. Surprisingly, an enjoyable boss at that. He dropped this cool accessory that gave you a trail of ice spikes when you dash, which I threw into the depths of my storage system. And now, the time has come. The point of the game where it started to lose any and all its essence that resembled it being an actual game. I'd like to call this part of pre-hard mode a flaccid judgment because it did the opposite of turn me on. You see, we were approaching the end of pre-hard mode and they had just a teaspoon left of nauseating mindfuck to shove down our throats, non-consensually. But enough spouting about the psychological pain I had to put myself through, we had to make the second of final boss's summon, which consisted of the most random shit really. Like why the hell did I need to fish for a chum bucket? Anyway, with having the literal doomsday device in my very hands, I take some time to earn money for reforges, then started working on a pedestal to lay my relics on. These damn things weren't easy to get, you know? We had to make something nice for them. But a tragedy struck. I got bored, so I just left it looking like that for now. I honestly just wanted to hop into this boss because I was dying to see just how Mascus Mode Deviant differs from Eternities. And the first attack she hit me with really made me consider suing for defamation. How on God's green and blue earth was she hitting me with the same amount of animosity as there was on 9-11? And the fact that I had to be that close to her in order to deal proper damage was not helping in the slightest. I actually considered changing classes for this fight just because of how tedious it was to land hits all the while keeping all your limbs. What made this boss even more confusing was was the fact that a good 70% of her attacks were actually super fucking easy to deal with, while the 30% felt like I was fighting Sans on 5 times speed. But that statement only has accountability on her first phase. You see, after 10 attempts later, I managed to sneak my way into her second phase. Now, the average person would think, hey, that didn't take that long to do, this will be one and done in just a few hours or so. Mm. How about days? Oh, Not no. only do her attacks deal almost double the damage from her previous oh phase, gosh, but they God, also get some type of fucking Dragon Ball treatment and evolve into this shit. If there was any time I wanted Darwin's theory to be proven wrong, it would be right now. But the only benefit that came from this whole fiesta was the fact that my ears were being blessed with this banger tune. Seriously, I think this is one of the best boss themes I've ever heard, and it's partially the reason I didn't quit, believe it or not. Anyway, the scenario of crawling my way through bits of her health and meeting my doom went on for hours. I even started realizing one of her attacks had lifesteal, and she would just get 
gain back all this health, setting me even farther back. I also noticed that potion effects get disabled from time to time for some reason. So me being more stuck than Rainbow Dash in that one jar, I pled for the magic thingy bob to help me out. I forgot what it was called, alright? This thing. And it was telling me to use an accessory called the Nymph's Perfume, which grants me immunity to Love Struck and Hexed, which seemed pretty damn useful. So I grabbed a City Buster to make some space underground, and with my Battle Cry being active, I started waiting for a Nymph to spawn. It actually took way longer than expected, but eventually I killed one, then bought more summons from the Deviant to obtain the Lost Pearl scent. And after reforging it, then strategically switching it out with one of my main accessories, the process of my lifespan getting chucked into a wood chipper commences once again. Throughout the three days I've been working on this boss, I'd say the first two really made me reconsider playing his melee, because I didn't think it was possible for me. I even thought of skipping her and just trying again when I had gear from beyond the wall. I tried different reforges, different accessories, different strategies, and it was just like the stars weren't aligning for me in the slightest. But little by little, I was starting to see progress. Not great progress, but it was progress. I also ended up sticking with Lucky on all my accessories, since I figured the more damage I had, the sooner I can end this torment. Also, I could not get Legendary on my sword for the dull life of me, so there's that as well. I even rose my arena by two platforms so I could dodge that axe attack a bit better. And with those slight improvements, I started getting her lower and lower by the hour. Until, after around 100 deaths in, I started to dig deep, deep into my mind and find the true motivation, precision, and focus I needed to end her once and for all. As I glared at my five and a half brain cells, they glared back, knowing what needed to be done. I didn't give up, fucker. <laughs> Over eight hours of migraine and headache, and we were left with the deviant shattered, flatlined, unfixable. I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, the deviant is absolute garbage for making me realize just how garbage I am at this game. Anyway, it was pretty fun nonetheless. Still smashed. I cannot wait to see what the other siblings are going to put me through. But now, with finally scooping up some of her delicious energy, I can now make two new life-saving accessories. First was being the Supreme Deathbringer Fairy. A mouthful, I know. And this creature in Trail Infinity Stone acted as a singular vessel for all four of these boss exclusive accessories when combined with some of the deviant's succulent essence, meaning I was in fact balling. Next up on the list was the Zephyr Boots, and with it having a moderately simple crafting recipe, I had them in my arsenal in no time. And besides reforges, I was pretty much ready to separate myself from these pre hardboard lands. But since I feel like I've been focusing way too much on bosses, literally, I invited some more of my subscribers into my cancerous bubble of world to make some more decent or completely mediocre structures around the place. We gotta make it feel a little like home, don't we? Since, you know, this was gonna be my little prison cell until I beat the game. There's no such thing as insanity when you've got eye-catching builds like this to keep you company. I also placed down this double obsidian bridge in hell for when it was time to fight the wall, so, you know, I didn't have to do it later, I don't know. And out of the two and a half builds that were created, I feel like the Deviant Shrine was ten times better than whatever the hell this was supposed to be. Oh my gosh, it looks like... It, no, you know what it looks like? Bread, come here. It looks like a, a flesh mountain doing the 
you know, the Nazi salute. The embodiment of wrath and bullshit that laid within this somewhat anti-Semitic structure was marvelous. And after fooling around for a bit, making even more atrocities, I felt it was time to tell my doves to fly the hell out of my world so I could attempt the percented nightmare known as the Wall of Flesh. Now, right off the bat, I'll confirm this fight wasn't nearly as bad as the Deviants was. Okay, wait, that actually might be a lie now that I think about it. You know, I'll say this. This fight really felt like a proper last stand to finish off pre-hard mode. It was very, very frustrating. Not because it was super difficult, but because this fight was the embodiment of timing and precision. Now, that just might sound like everything I've encountered in this mod so far, but this was truly different to everything I went up against so far. But I will say this. The only times I, like, seriously struggled on this boss was when he was around 30 to 40% of his health. Not necessarily because he learns new attacks, but because of the intense pick of a pace he gains from being very Low. The very little time I had to make safe placements to avoid the tentacles he shot from the ceiling, as well as making sure I aligned his horrendous laser to a secure spot was crazy overwhelming. The damage wasn't what I was concerned about with these attacks, it was the nasty ass debuffs. Cause for one, the laser douses you in unstable, making you teleport uncontrollably for a few seconds, and you best hope you don't get sent outside his barrier cause he absolutely despises it. Second is whenever you get bonked by a tentacle, he literally snatches you and pulverizes you into his thick meat. And all that mixed with this eye core and cursed flame attack just made the urge to finish tying another knot a lot more irresistible. Now honestly, this went on for hours. I knew something was missing, but I had no idea what it could possibly be. I got as many remaining upgrades as I could for the stage of the game, and those things consisted of more reforging, finding the shimmer to grab myself the vital crystal, placing heart lanterns and campfires around the underworld, and well, even more reforging. For some reason, no matter how much platinum I spent trying to get the legendary modifier on my Knight's Edge, it was just not giving it to me. It seemed almost as unlikely to happen as me seeing sunlight. So after two hours of rinse and repeating the cycle, I just got fed up and set my world to multiplayer and did this for a while. I don't know how this works, but it does. Letting me finally get all the modifiers I craved onto whatever I needed. And just like that, we were back at it. Now I should say, for a majority of the time I spent butting heads with this thing, I experimented a lot with accessories, arenas, and a lot of different reforge combinations. But somehow I still haven't found that one glimmer of hope that I oh so desperately needed. Each attempt seemed more and more distant for me completing my goal of crushing this thing. His Super Saiyan phase was still too extravagant that I really started to think it couldn't be done by my hand. Hours stacked onto each other like it was nothing, and all those hours held were my shallow attempts that proved to be nothing short of futile. Until I finally saw the sparkle of hope. I reread the effects of my Deathbringer Fairy and found out it allowed me to do a special dash with a hotkey. And I figured, hey, maybe this will actually let me match the speed of some of the wall's attacks, allowing me to somewhat evade them. And that, my friends, was the missing key I've been looking for, for all this time. Oh my god, oh my god, I fucking did it.